What the hell? I can't, I can't translate the Pisian language, game. I, I think I know where we're gonna go. Yeah, we're here. I, I, this is the place I thought was like the Eternal Oasis or whatever, but no, this is just a memory space. It's just me? It's just me, not even Paimon? I love this view. What is this place? I suppose you could call it the realm of my consciousness. I'm someone who no longer exists in the real world after all. As you well know. Yeah, well, you look quite exhausted. Uh, it's nothing. I still have enough strength to play the part of a good host. I've always hoped that I'd get the chance to talk to you like this. Are you and the now, one that's out, that convinced them to send this commission? Arrived. This is a rare opportunity for me as well. I should try to learn as much information from Kyber as I can. What exactly happened to you? Extreme sorrow and pain. Hope and regret coursing through your veins. And a degree of abyssal power that defies comprehension. Father told me that once I possessed all those elements, I would become the loom of fate. But... Despite his intentions for me, I never truly became the Loom of Fate. I was merely used as a means for its construction. In truth, I died the moment I set everything in motion. What? The person you see before you now is nothing but a remnant of consciousness left over within the Loom of Fate. Kyber is dead. That's why he no longer exists outside of people's memories. As for your question, the Loom of Fate is a device capable of weaving ley lines. Weaving ley lines? In its primitive form, it can only be used to create and implant memories. But, as more of it is completed, its power becomes stronger and stronger, until finally, it has the power to weave real ley lines of its own. The fate of the world will be yours to reweave. Once fully completed, the moment it gains the power to weave ley lines, it loses the lower level ability to influence memories. But it also becomes a tool that can change the entire, entire world. world. So that was the source of your ability to implant memories? Yes. I have the ability to control the loom in its semi-completed form. I suppose you can think of it as a form of compensation. That's how you can implant memories. After all, its existence cost me my life. So memories that suddenly appeared in Dane's mind were implanted by Kari Bear through the half-finished Loom of Fate. That makes sense. But I'm still lost to ask went so far as to introduce himself to all the residents of Mara Village. But why did you implant memories of yourself into the people from our village? Ah, uh, that. I was wrong to implant those memories. I'm sorry I caused so much trouble. Not only for everyone in the village, but for you as well. I just... wanted them to feel like I once existed in this world. As if... I had a chance at life. So that's why. I would have never guessed. But is there any kind of meaning to this? Does existing only in people's memories really count as living? 
I know what you must be thinking. Why would I do something so meaningless? <sighs> but I just... I just couldn't accept it. I had to know what it would be like if I had my own life. What kind of person I would be. What other people would think of me. Chief Amadea, Baram, Granny Jahiat, Atosa. What would it be like if I could live alongside them? There's the figurines. No cataclysm, no curse. Just a quiet life in a peaceful village. I was curious, so I selfishly tried to have my own life. Even if... Even if that meant piecing together the version of myself that could have been one memory at a time. I know it sounds stupid. <laughs> After all, my life ended a long time ago. Any chance at living was stripped away from me when I was eight years old. My consciousness left to mature in an illusory world of nothingness. Even the form you see before you was... Nothing but an invention based on my father's appearance. An imagined version of what I would look like if I had the chance to grow up. In the end, this all stems from the tragedy that occurred in the economy back then. You know, everyone's looking for you. I know. But there's nothing I can do to make them find me. If I could exist in the real world, I would return without a second thought and surprise them with the suddenness of it all. But, well, that's not possible for me. As I understand it, even though you only appear in memories, your existence was a great comfort to them. Uh, they all believe in you once lived among them. I know. Well, now that I found you, let's continue this conversation some other time. Dane might still need my help. Captain Danesliff? Twilight Sword, you mean? Ah, uh, no need to meet up with him. Things should already be settled on his end. Settled? Exactly. As someone who could only exist in people's memories. The fact that I'm able to talk to you in my consciousness like this can only mean one thing. The loom of fate has already been completed. Dane lost? What? The loom of fate is already complete. That means the eye the first field swim must have fallen into the hands of the abyss. Could something have happened to Dane? No need to worry about Captain Dane's left. He's absolutely fine. The only reason he lost the eye was because I happened to guess exactly what he was planning. Captain Dainsliff has had the eye inside his body this whole time, hasn't he? His plan was to lure the Abyss Order to a false location, capitalizing on their pursuit of the eye in order to have the chance to confront the princess. He would then hand the eye to you and tell you to take it away from that location. That way, Captain Dainsliff could accomplish his own goal and ensure the safety of the eye all at once. A very thorough Wait. plan. They never handed me the eye. That's right. Because in his mind, he had given it to you already. Oh. Wait, Wait does, does that mean he gave Dane a false, false memory? memory? You made him think that. When? Before you two entered that false location. Oh, so that was the pause. Traveler, wait. And they got the eye. We've no time to lose. Let's head inside. So I had the eye the entire time. So when Dane was up back then, it was because of false memories being implanted in his mind. No wonder. That was when I implanted the memory of him handing you the eye. 
Given the tense situation at that time, oh. Captain Davis, I failed to notice anything out of the ordinary and took that memory to be real. I'm sorry, Traveler, but I needed the Loom of Fate to be completed. And to do that, we had to retrieve the eye. So Dane had the eye the whole time, until the Abyss Order took it away. I'm not sure if there's anything we could have done. Now that the Loom of Fate is complete, what are you planning on doing with it? I promise I'm not trying to conceal anything from you, but I truly have no idea what the princess is planning. Then let me talk to her. Tavat's ley line system is deeply entrenched in the planet. Creating new ley lines can neither replace nor extend the ones that already exist. In the face of everything they could be planning, I fear I'm too insignificant to even get a glimpse of the bigger picture. In any case, I had my own use for the Loom of Fate, and my goal, at least, has been achieved. Your goal? You remember my father, don't you? Clotar Alberic. I believe you saw him in your sibling's memory. After he used the power of the Abyss to restore consciousness to my hilly churl form, I suffered from an indescribable level of mental anguish. To comfort me, my father told me a story that this was a fairy tale world where I had to take on the form of a little monster. That story managed to dispel my fears, even if just for a moment. My goal was simple, to use the loom of fate in its near completed form, when its ability to create memories was at its strongest, to implant a specific memory into the minds of the Hilla Churls. In that memory, I would tell them a story, just like my father did for me. It was a story of fairy tales and love. But, more than anything, it was the story of us. So that was the voice we kept on hearing then. In, in this memory at least. So the thing that caused the Hilch to come out back then was Kari Bear's story. That was his goal. That was the only thing he wanted. He had the most powerful as the moon of fate at his disposal, and all he wanted to do with it was to offer the Hilda Church a moment of comfort and peace. I can't change the world. Not when I lost the very right to exist within it. Implanting those memories, that was the most worthwhile thing I could offer. I think it was very meaningful indeed. All that's left of my existence is a wisp of residual consciousness tied to the loom of fate. In truth, that trace of my consciousness should have dissipated long ago. My goal was the one thing that allowed me to hold on all this time. But now, the bedtime, bedtime story, story is finished. That's why. And it's finally time to rest. That's why this story is called Bedtime Story. Dude, this is so sad. I was too late to see Kari Bear one last time. And the mean. <laughs> I swear to God. Game. <laughs> Come on! Kari Bear's consciousness is gone. And this space will soon disappear along with it. Neither of us belongs here. That's why we're not tangible. 
<sighs> Were that not the case, I'd love to hug you too. Well, how about a conversation? You're kidding, game. Stop. Oh, god damn you. God damn you. Dude, that's so fucking sad. Really? The chance to just stop and talk like this is certainly not easy to come by. Wouldn't you agree? I almost can't believe it's real. That battle earlier was tough. The one against Dane, I mean. I didn't expect that after everything, he would still hesitate to raise his sword against me. Were it not for that, perhaps I'd still be no match for the Twilight Sword. Even after 500 years. What are you going to do with the Loom of Fate? The Loom of Fate, huh? <sighs> I still haven't found a way to utilize it to its full potential. But there's still time before the Heavenly Principles awaken. Wait, what? The Heavenly Principles are still asleep? Yes, for 500 years now, ever since the Cataclysm. Wait, they're Korea, asleep? There's been no sign of activity. Not long ago, you witnessed the Hydro Archon destroy oh, uh, the Divine Oh, uh, no, he did say that, actually, now yes. I think about it. Yeah, we did. Such a flagrant disregard for the rules, and still Celestia took no action. Yeah. I suppose that's proof enough of the Heavenly Principles situation. However, the Heavenly Principles will awaken. We just don't know when that will be, or what might trigger it. You really hate the Heavenly Principles, don't you? You could say that. Just look at Kari Bear. He was so pure and single-minded. The space we now find ourselves is a perfect representation of who he was. Quiet and peaceful. Even as a hilly churl, seeing the terrible sight within the mirror wasn't enough to taint his spirit. He brought comfort to the people of this world. Even though he was denied the very right to be a part of it. So ask yourself this. Who was it that deprived him of that right to exist? Celestia. Of course, that's only one example. My feelings about the Heavenly Principles are too complicated to explain in just a few words. Ether? Again, she's using his name, not my name. You're the only one in this world who calls me that. Wow, it changes his name! There's so much I wanted to ask you, but for some reason, I'm not interested in asking those questions. Wow! Anymore. There's just one thing I have to ask. One thing I could never understand. Why? Why can't we continue our journey together? She even acknowledges that too. At the end of my journey, I arrived at a place known as the Sea of Flowers at the end. What? Do you remember? A long time ago, when we traveled between worlds together, you told me you wanted to find a place in the universe where that one flower was in full bloom. To have a place like that suddenly appear before me. Well, would you think of that as a coincidence? You mean... I miss you too, Aether. But as this war continues to rage, and as I continue to seek that final answer, I don't even know how to face myself sometimes, let alone my own brother. <sighs> huh? What? Well What's going on? This space has lost its tether. I doubt it'll be able to exist much longer. In fact, aside from our inability to physically interact with each other, there's something else you should know about this space. Are you serious? With Kari Bear gone, 
We won't be able to remember anything that happened here. Everything in this place will be wiped from existence. Oh, that's cruel. Including all memory of our reunion. That is so cruel. Are you telling me this now? Sleepy. Are you kidding me right now? His head feels all fuzzy. Oh, Paimon woke up a little earlier than you, so Paimon will fill you in. The villagers said that they saw us sleeping near the village yesterday. They couldn't you can't just drop no like- hard They tried, so they decided to just bring us back here. Oh, and Dane came by just now? It looked like he was injured. Well, I mean, we know he lost the fight to Lumine. anything, though. Just make sure that you were all right and left. Kind of seemed like he had a lot on his mind, but that's Dane for ya. He never changes, does he? I'm having trouble thinking straight right now. Hmm. Let's think for a second. We were in that memory, and we saw that guy you called Curry Bear. And that was it. He was the missing villager that we've been trying to find, right? And after that, uh, Paimon doesn't remember what happened. Kyber and I talked for a while. He Told me about the loom of fate. Wait, really? What a score! Guess our commission is complete then. The missing villager, the person who only exists in people's memories. It was Kyber all along. But now that it's gone, I'm not sure how to explain things to the villagers. Well, what happened after that? After that? Huh. I can't seem to remember. Maybe I'm just tired. I feel like something else happened, but why can't I remember? I'm not sure why. But it almost feels like I lost something. Ah, there you are. <laughs> Sleep well? So Ether is also vulnerable to some sort of memory loss like this too. Aaron, you sure seem happy. Did something good happen? Something good? Huh. Wasn't anything good or bad, I'd say. It's just that, well, the village organized another search party yesterday. It didn't feel right to leave all the searching to the adventurers. So there we were, searching away, when suddenly this one guy said it all came back to him. According to him, one day around dusk, he was passing by this one tree outside the village, and he saw our missing villager. Seriously? There he was, sleeping under that tree all by himself. His parents came a little later to wake him up, and they all left together. It looked like a oh. happy family, apparently. One final and implantation. after that, well, we all started to feel like that really is what happened. Kind of strange that we forgot all about it for so long. So, that's how Carver says to us. That was the last memory he gave oh, them. and we also remembered his name. Curry Bear. Now, that's not a name you hear every day. Would have been helpful if we remembered it sooner. That's a unique name. Make sure you remember it this time. Well, I hope he's happy wherever he is. And we're all relieved now that we know what happened. Seems like everyone thinks Kari Bear left the village. That's probably for the best. At least they have some sort of explanation now. Kari Bear is gone. The Luma Fate is now complete. And no one else will try to change the village's memories. Mm. How a toast is doing. Maybe we should go check on her. If she hasn't remembered like everyone else, we can tell her what happened. Paimon didn't see her in the village just now, so she's probably at the tree. Come on, let's go talk to her. Dude, what the hell, game? Why would you do that? Why on earth would you do that? <sighs> hey, Atosa, how's it going? Oh, 
it's you two. I was just about to go looking for you. I wanted to thank you. I was part of the search party, so I... Remember what happened to and Kari. Now we know that Tosa actually had feelings Honestly, for him, too. I just... Can't believe I forgot something so important. I'm sure he wouldn't want you to forget him. It's funny, but... I have this feeling he told me the same thing. I just can't seem to remember when. I guess it doesn't really matter anyway. Life is made up of a series of memories. As long as I hold on to our time together, he'll always be a part of my life. I'm just happy I got to meet him. So, who cares what happens in the future, right? It's okay. You have to let it all out. Just let it all okay, out. Hey, I'll admit. I'm just putting on a brave face. I was dumped, wasn't I? Otherwise, why would he just leave like that without saying goodbye? So yeah, no, she, she had feelings for him, too. I'm sure he had his reasons. <laughs> you don't need to comfort me. I'll be okay. It's just like Kari Bear said. It's the things we overcome that make life more precious. And you know, if he has a heart, maybe he'll come back and see me one day. Anyway, thanks for all your hard work, you two. I promised I'd help Granny Jahiet with something, so I should head back. Goodbye. Well, that should be it, right? Everyone's lives can go back to normal now. Oh, right. Weren't you about to tell Paimon what happened after your conversation with Curry Bear? Right. What was it that happened? I can't remember. Huh. I guess I did something in my pocket. Uh, a picture? Where'd that come from? Let Paimon see! I swear to God, don't you dare game. You! Screw off, game. God, this is freaking cruel. That's how we're ending it off. That's how we're ending off Fontaine's chapter. I, I... Ah, fuck it. God, that is just cruel. Well, it's only short. I've, I've nothing, I have nothing to say. A hey, secret is no signing out. How it going, guys?